Hey, Aaron. Uh, Aralda said the other day he wasn't quite sure when he was going to get in a game. Do you have any idea when he'll be pitching? Uh, not sure yet. Um, we're actually tomorrow with with all the rain coming, and because we don't have a lot of scheduled pitchers, we're gonna tomorrow's gonna be pretty much an off day. Um, you know, Paxton I know has got to come in and throw, and maybe a couple treatment guys, but tomorrow is gonna be an off day, and we'll kind of reshuffle uh, and go from there. Anything new with Masahiro? Uh, no, I don't have anything new for you. He was out again today, and I checked in with him briefly, but I haven't gotten the report of how everything went today. When I checked in with him, he was doing well. Tyler Wade was at the podium earlier. How valuable could a speed guy like that be, especially considering some of the rule changes and in extra innings? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, I've, I've you know, we've long felt that um, – Tyler can be that really, really valuable super utility. I mean, rule change or not, um, just with his ability to defend in the middle of the diamond def uh, in the infield, we've seen what a, what a good outfielder he's become when we've put him in that situation. Uh, there's no question that, you know, he's an elite base runner and, and that usually shows up when he gets in the game. Uh, it's just about, you know, continuing to progress offensively and, we think he can be a very valuable player for us. What strides have you seen him make offensively, or is it just a matter of getting big league at, at bats and seeing the consistency? Yeah, I think it's that. Um, but but he's certainly always working on just impacting the ball a little bit better, you know, taking advantage of his speed to, you know, continuing to, to try and, uh, you know, kind of become an expert of handling the bat and laying bunts down, um, but really working on, that line drive swing um, because he's got a pretty good understanding of the strike zone and hopefully with more and more reps and more and more opportunities, we'll start to see that at this level. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Take the next question from Sweeney Murdy. Sweeney, go ahead and unmute. Hey Aaron, a lot of uh, people have talked about in the shorter season, you have to maybe be a little more aggressive with players who are in a slump. You can't let them ride out for long stretches. Can the same be true for the team? A lot of times during the last few years, if you've gone through a few games where you're not scoring runs, you believe in the long-term 162 that it'll pick up. Do you maybe have to be a little more aggressive in a situation if you run into a two or three game offensive slump? I don't know. I mean, I have so much confidence in our guys and our roster. So, you know, obviously you're asking from a position player context. I have so much confidence in our guys that when they're in the right situation and the right matchups, they're going to be productive. So um, I, I guess in theory, we have a little less, you know, patience to ride something out maybe, but when I look at our guys on our roster, I mean, I know we're going to lean heavily on them. And when they're in there, um, I'm going to be confident they're they're going to go out there and produce whether they're going through a tough stretch or or whether they're they're rolling. Um, so, you know, the way I look at our guys, I don't think that applies that much. But look, there's no question. There's there's probably a little more urgency than normal. Take the next question from Ken Davidoff. Ken, go ahead and unmute. Aaron, uh, I got it right this time. Um, ESPN uh, reported yesterday that the Yankees subtly discouraged Aaron Judge from being publicly vocal on racial issues. And I'm wondering if you are aware of that or have you spoken with Aaron about that? Obviously, this has been a, a big item of discussion uh, in general since George Floyd. That we subtly asked him not to? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, as far as I know, that that's absolutely false. In fact... If anything, we encourage our guys to, um, if, if they want their voice to be heard on, on whatever the subject may be, we're going to always encourage them to, to, to speak, speak their mind and their heart. Has that been a, a particularly uh, prominent item of discussion, Aaron, since uh, George Floyd? Um, we, we have talked about that um, throughout the organization, um, within our team, within our club. Um, you know, individually with different guys as well. Um, it is something that 
Um, I think it's a very important conversation and, and hopefully is obviously a huge conversation in our, in our country right now, but, um, you know, it's a conversation that we hope to advance and, um, and be better for, and, and hopefully we're, we're having difficult conversations amongst each other all the time. And do you expect any sort of displays, uh, come the regular season with the national anthem playing and, and stuff like that? Uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, we'll have mm. conversations and, and, you know, I, I'm sure, um, those things are, are very, very possible, um, ac across. We've already seen those in different leagues. I'm sure that's very much, uh, on the minds and hearts of, of, of several players. Thank you, Mark. Mm-hmm. Eric Boland, you can unmute and ask the next question. Hey, Aaron, thanks. Uh, thanks for the time, as always. What were your uh, what jumps out the the few little bit that you saw of David Garcia in the spring? What was the first thing that came to mind when you saw him out there? Um, he's got a great demeanor and poise about him. Um, you know, he handles himself. Um, with a lot of confidence, um, you know, I wouldn't say cocky at all, but there's a confidence and a, and you know, there's, you can tell he believes when he steps on the mound that, um, he's very capable. Um, and then his ability to spin the ball, uh, is, is really impressive. And I, and I think, you know, just seeing his first bullpen the other day, um, you know, I, I know he's working on things within his delivery, um, that I feel like he's made some some strides since since we've seen him at the start of spring training. Thank you. Mm -hmm. George King, you have the next question. Go ahead and unmute. Aaron, if you don't have LeMahieu at the beginning or forever how long, are you comfortable with Tyler Wade, the full-time second baseman, or how would you approach that if that's not the plan? Yeah, I mean, we have um, – Tyler, I have a lot of confidence in, um, you know, especially how he's going to impact the game defensively there. Um, you know, we have a lot of confidence in Tyro Estrada. You know, Roselle Herrera has has impressed us, obviously, with the spring he had. Um, you know, we, we brought in a Matt Duffy that could figure into that mix. That's that's a an established solid big league player. So, um, you know, we feel like we have options there that will be covered there, um, you know, in, in the event that if we did have to start the season uh, without DJ. Anything new there? No. Thank you. Yep. Dave Lennon, go ahead and unmute. You got a question? Aaron, can you hear me? Yes. Um, just kind of to pick up what it, George had said, I mean, DJ's health is obviously the primary concern, but, you know, based on the nature of it, I mean, how hard is it to gauge the readiness of a player? And also, how is that? I know you mentioned the number of players that you have to try to work in the mix there. Mm -hmm. How challenging has it been or, or how has that process been to try to get these guys familiar with each other and kind of up to speed to kind of fill that hole in the infield? Yeah, I mean, you know, in Tyro and and Tyler's case, um, you know, they've they've played a lot with Glaber and and now Gio and Miggy and and Luke and Mike, so I don't worry about that part of it. Um, you know, as far as you know, DJ probably as much as any player. Um, you know, I feel good. I'm gonna feel good about you know where he's at, and I know how how much he takes care of himself and is ready to go and you know if anyone could handle you know being out at the start of the camp and you had to pick and, and maybe dj because he he worked tires tireless tirelessly easy for me to say um you know through the whole quarantine down in tampa he was able to get reps he he was ready to go and 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 the good thing is he's not he doesn't feel sick so it's not something that's wiped him out um, so, you know, I do feel good about the player being able to pick up in pretty short order once, once it is time for him to come back. 